South Africa has officially exited the third wave of the coronavirus pandemic. The National Institute of Communicable Diseases made the announcement this past weekend. Politicians and other leaders have made this call for some time, though. So what exactly constitutes the end of a wave? Let's hear from the NICD's acting director, Professor Adrian Purin, who joins me now. Professor, thanks for your time. Uh, the NICD said nationally, We've exited the third wave according to the current definition. So what currently defines the end of a wave? Yes, so we're looking at various parameters and we're looking at the peak incidence and comparing that to the current incidence that we're experiencing. And I think my understanding is that if that um, current incidence is 15% 15 of the, the peak incidence, then in fact you are now exiting um, from the wave. So nationally, um, South Africa overall has, if you like, exited uh, from its third um, resurgence. However, I just would like to caution again that um, this is overall, but remember that there are two provinces at least. I think it's the uh, Northern Cape and Free State, which are still, and I think Eastern Cape as well, which are still have, have not exited from um, their resurgence. Um, so although the overall picture is that we have exited as a country, there are certainly still provinces that are still in their third resurgence. In other words, they still have a high uh, incidence, which they, and they've not reached that particular incidence, which allows them to say that they've exited from that. Uh, and I think, uh, Professor, that may be why there's some confusion in that uh, some provinces exited the third wave before others, and there's been a confusion about the entire national picture. Now, some data had predicted Absolutely. that the third yeah. wave would end much sooner, end of August. Why has it lasted so long? Well, the, the multiple factors to that, in fact, and the one comment I did want to add is that, in fact, when you looked at this particular um, resurgence, it was fairly heterogeneous in terms of the, the geography. In other words, Hateng had a really massive increase in cases and a, a really sharp decline, whereas, for example, provinces on the coastal regions, um, such as the uh, KwaZulu-Natal, Eastern Cape and uh, the Western Cape, certainly had an onset of their resurgence much, much later. And then compared to the Northern Cape and the Free State, which really simply, in the case of the Northern Cape, didn't actually exit from its second uh, research and simply went straight into the next resurgence. So there's been marked um, heterogeneity that may account for the differences that we have actually uh, been seeing. The concept of waves, Professor, is not, not unique to COVID-19. Um, the, the, inf the influenza virus, the common flu, also has waves. What are the drivers of the waves, particularly for COVID-19? Yes, yeah, so uh, you're just going back because I didn't complete my, uh, your, <laughs> the, the response to your particular question. In fact, one of the big drivers um, has been, in fact, the dominance of particular variants. Um, so, for example, in the second resurgence, we certainly had the beta variant that was initially identified in South Africa, and then the delta variant uh, that was imported into South Africa as well. And those have been the major drivers. In fact, that's why we have probably seen um, the extent of the cases that we've seen and also the, the duration, because these mm. particular viruses have been highly transmissible compared to, for example, the wild type. So that, those are some of the differences. In the, over and above that, I think we also need to take into account the heterogeneity in terms of the special uh, setting in different provinces, which allowed for ongoing um, transmission. The levels of immunity within particular communities as well have certainly allowed for that, as well as the fact that, um, that we also had the non-pharmaceutical interventions were, were our major target, if you like, um, in terms of trying to stem transmissions. And that, of course, has varied, um, I think, in various provinces in terms of compliance. So these particular factors are certainly um, important. And then, of course, we have the introduction of the vaccines. Of course, um, it, we're still in the early phases, so its yeah. contribution has been, not have been as marked um, as we are hoping that if we do have another resurgence, that there the vaccine will certainly play a more dominant role in terms of changing the setting that we've seen in the previous um, resurgences. Uh, we are constantly hearing about the prospect of another resurgence, a fourth wave. How is that modeled? And I is there uh, the prospect that that's going to be driven by uh, an entirely new variant? Yes, yeah, so at this point, um, I think it's difficult to say. Um, it's difficult to predict what will happen. The Delta variant is still uh, fairly dominant. Um, and in fact, when you look at that list from the, the WHO, the variants that we've been speaking about over the last year and a bit are still there. 
Um, there are other variants of, of interest that may well um, come into play, but we've not seen those in circulation um, in South Africa. So that, that's really difficult to predict. I think the other factors um, are, for example, our vaccine rates and coverage, and in particular, the coverage in uh, vulnerable groups. And for me, the vulnerable groups would be in particular age categories with and without comorbidities will really, I think, influence how that particular fourth resurgence um, may well look like. It may, again, be heterogeneous across the provinces, um, but we, it, it's difficult to predict. And I think that that's why the modelers are not, uh, if you like, presenting us with a crystal ball vision of what, what will actually happen during that fourth resurgence. Uh, Professor, when these, when these uh, waves are predicted, is, is it a certainty that they will happen, that they're going to transpire, or is there a way of preventing them? Yes, yeah, so I think, again, these are models. They, they tell you, given our current knowledge, what is it that we may or may not see. But there are other factors that will influence that. And as you saw, when we looked at the third resurgence, did not take into account that we would have another variant and a variant that would be so highly transmissible. So that changed the, the model setting completely. So I think we can say that we have an idea based on our current knowledge uh, for example, our application of the MPIs and the extent of immunity in communities, um, the previous uh, resurgence, how, what did that look like? So we can certainly say this is the these are possibilities, but it's not necessarily an absolute. But these possibilities are important because they influence our planning, in other words. So you're getting ready in terms of our hospital beds, oxygen supply, staffing, these are the critical elements that are informed by a new wave or the possibility of a new wave. So it's not necessarily inevitable. It's likely that we will have resurgences because, again, not everybody has been exposed to this particular virus. Um, our vaccine coverage is not possibly at the levels that we expect to see in the context of the, the, the Delta variant. So these are likely uh, factors that will contribute to the resurgence, but how it will look like, I think, may well be difficult to, um, to actually predict and say this is it definitely, because things could change. We could all become very compliant uh, with wearing our masks, physical distancing, um, ventilation, and so forth. So those are all key factors that can influence how those particular waves or resurgences will look like. So I think we're trying to bring back the word resurgence as opposed to wave. Okay. Um, so wave, you're quite right. Um, influenza had these particular waves, which are seasonal. But again, when we look at the patterns for um, the the current virus, it's yeah. not necessarily seasonal at all, in fact. And so we may see a different uh, set of patterns, yeah. All right. Professor Adrian Purin, thank you so much. He's the acting uh, director of the NICD, speaking about the resurgence of coronavirus.